Welcome back to Golf Extra. The competition between Live Golf and the PGA Tour has been raging for a long time, and now the feud has stretched into other arenas. That's right, Live isn't just pursuing players from the PGA Tour to enhance their alternative offering, they're also trying to pull away some of the courses that the PGA claims as part of their unique value proposition. But which courses are they targeting? And what is the PGA Tour doing in response? Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Now, let's get right into all the details about Live Golf's theft of one of the PGA Tour's signature courses. Live Golf and the PGA Tour have been in public competition for much of the last year. However, most of that competition has come over players. The two organizations have drawn figurative lines in the sand, saying that their respective players cannot play on the competing tours and as such have been the subject of a lot of media attention and visible feuds. However, there is another battle going on behind the scenes, and it's a battle that may have further ramifications on the future of the golf world than just the movement of players. The PGA Tour has a full circuit of tournament venues that are known and anticipated by their fans each and every year. Many of these courses are key parts of why fans watch games each year. After all, what would the Waste Management Phoenix Open be without TPC Scottsdale? Or what would the players be without TPC Sawgrass and its famous Island Green on the 16th? Fans might simply not even tune in to watch, which would obviously have consequences for the bottom line of the tour. Even still, some of those venues might not be in the PGA Tour rotation much longer, especially if Live Golf Organization has anything to say about it. In fact, a course that the PGA Tour has used for 16 seasons is now changing allegiances over to Live Golf. The El Chameleon Golf Club, located on the Mayacoba Resort in Mexico, has played host to PGA Tour events for years. Most notably, it has been the host of the Worldwide Technology Championship. The course, located south of Cancun, meanders through several different ecosystems. In particular, it features rainforest-like jungles, coastal mangrove forest, canals, and even some famous Pacific Ocean front. The clear views of the stunning blue ocean have been a major attraction in watching the PGA Tour event. In addition to the on-course scenery, the course is located within the Mayacoba Eco Resort and has a grand total of four luxury hotels, the Andaz, the Banyan Tree, the Fairmont, and the Rosewood. It has been regarded as one of the best resorts for a golf vacation in the world, so a big golf tournament is definitely good advertising for the resort. We know that golf fans are mainly interested in the on-course characteristics, though. If you're not yet convinced of the veracity of the course for pro golf, consider that it's ranked 18th in Golf Week's rankings of the best golf courses in Mexico, the Caribbean, the Atlantic Islands, and Central America. Not a bad list to top. In what has turned out to be the final PGA Tour event held at the course in early November 2022, Norwegian star Victor Hovland took a four-stroke victory over the rest of the field. We're sure that he'll be missing the stop on the PGA Tour for another chance at a win. By this point, you've probably guessed. El Chameleon will from this point on will be a live golf venue. However, this isn't necessarily surprising when you consider all of the facts. Live Golf CEO Greg Norman designed the course as part of one of his many business ventures and continues to be strongly associated with the people in charge at Mayacoba. So in a lot of ways, this was expected, but it also remains a point of contention and a thorn in the sides of the PGA Tour. In addition, the El Chameleon Golf Club and the Worldwide Technology Championship was the victim of another key change that the PGA Tour is in the process of instituting. The PGA Tour announced last fall that it would be adding elevated aspects to several of its events. Just what makes an elevated event, you might ask? Well, as it turns out, this means increased purses, as well as guaranteed appearances from some of the tour's top players. This is done in order to get both fans watching on the course and on TV. So far, they've announced that these events will take place at some of the Keystone PGA Tour venues, including the aforementioned Waste Management Phoenix Open and the Players' Championship in addition to other tournaments like the Four Majors, among others. PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan was pleased with the new change, commenting publicly, Our top players are firmly behind the tour, helping us deliver an unmatched product to our fans, who will be all but guaranteed to see the best players competing against each other in 20 events or more throughout the season. This is an extraordinary and unprecedented commitment, a testament to who these guys are and what they believe in. However, it's not all good news as far as these new events, at least as it relates to the aforementioned El Chameleon Golf Club. 
This course and the associated event, as it turns out, was not a part of the change to elevated events. This very well might have played a role in sending it off to the Live Tour as well. So, what will happen to the Worldwide Technologies event? The sponsor appears to still be signed on to the PGA Tour, so it stands to reason that they will be assigned to a new course for their event. As of now, though, there is no news on what the course may be. The Mayakova event for Live Golf has already taken place. Even, don't worry, we won't blame you if you weren't able to catch it. The course played host to the 2023 Live Golf Mayakoba event just a few weeks ago in late February, and there were plenty of PGA Tour veterans on hand to play the familiar course. Former PGA players like Peter Uline and Taylor Gooch found themselves at the top of the leaderboard, but they didn't come out on top. Going into the final round of the tournament, Charles Howe III found himself one stroke back and not in strong contention to win. It makes sense that the hype was relatively low for him. This was only his sixth tournament for Live Golf. Howe caught fire in the final round, though, picking up seven strokes in only the first 10 holes. His competitors weren't able to catch him, and he cruised to his first individual win on the tour, as well as leading his team, the Crushers, to a team victory. As it turns out, Howe's familiarity with the course might have played a role in the success that he found at El Chameleon this past February. After the victory, he said, Yeah, I thought I had a good chance to win. I've played here many times before and had an idea of what to expect coming in. But around this place, there are double bogeys everywhere, so you never know. So, the Mayakoba event seems to have been at least somewhat of a success for the live contingent, even though the PGA Tour seemed to give up the venue at least somewhat willingly. Fans and PGA officials alike, though, continue to be wary of additional thefts by Live Golf. A statement by Live CEO Norman accompanying the release of their 2023 schedule seemed to hint at their future aggressive pursuit of signature golf venues, reading, Live Golf is truly a global league dedicated to expanding the sport throughout the world. And these destinations for the league's 2023 launch showcase are a commitment to tournament play at the highest level. These venues have played host to signature moments in golf, and we're excited to build new traditions for the sport while delivering a first-class fan experience at some of the world's best courses. We'll have to stay tuned to see what will happen next and what venues each tour will play. Knowing these two organizations, there'll be plenty more drama to come. So, what do you think about Live Golf stealing the PGA Tour's venues? Do you watch professional golf events for the courses or the players? Are you excited for the PGA Tour's elevated events? Be sure to leave us a comment with what you think down below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you can watch our latest content updates as soon as they drop. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.